take a look at um, 12.6. So first thing we'll do is look at the um, surface area, then we'll figure out volume. All right, so what's the shape that's similar to a sphere in 2D? Circle. Circle, okay? And a circle is basically a set of points that are all equidistant from the center point. Well, a sphere is basically the same thing in 3D. It's a set of points that are equidistant from a given point we call the center of the sphere. Okay. Just like in a circle, we have a radius. Well, a sphere also has a radius. Okay. Radius is just the distance from the center to the edge of the sphere. Or to a point on the sphere itself. Any question on that? It's basically, if you understand what the radius of a circle is, radius of a sphere, it's, it's the same idea. Okay, so there's a, there's a picture. Okay, the dotted line is meant, meant to go behind it, so you can't see that part. Okay, here's your sphere, radius, distance from the center to the edge. Generally, if we have a center, um, they'll mark it as point C, and okay, that's the center. Any questions on that? Keep in mind, uh, if they give you a diameter, what do you have to do to change that to a radius? Yep. Good, take half of it. So any formula that you see radius in, make sure they didn't give you diameter um, to trick you. Okay, a chord. Well, in a circle, a chord is basically a segment that has its endpoints on the circumference of the circle. Same idea in a sphere. It's a segment where the endpoints are on the edges of the sphere. Okay, so in green, that's an example of a chord. If you have a chord that happens to go right through the center, then that's a diameter. Exactly the same definitions we had um, for circles. Yeah. Can you have more than one chord in a sphere? Yeah. Infinite. Yeah. There's in infinitely many chords in a sphere. Any questions on the definition of a chord or a diameter? Okay. How many diameters can you have in a sphere? Two, one, three, infinite. Infinite, right? We just said a diameter is a chord. Somebody just asked me, how many chords are there in a sphere? I said infinitely many. So there's infinitely many diameters in a sphere. Any line that goes right through the center. So any segment goes through the center. All right, so this formula, I'm going to give you the surface area one. The volume one, we're going to try to figure out. Um, but here's the one for your surface area. Okay. It's 4 pi r squared. We're not going to prove where this comes from. But if you want to know the surface area of a sphere, there's only one thing you need, just the radius. So surface area is 4 pi r squared. Does everyone get that formula? All right, so I want to try um, two things. First, I want to find the surface area of this sphere. Okay, pretty simple question. Just plug in 2 for r, do it out. And then I have another question. If you double the radius, do you think the area will double? Think. How about uh, Olivia? What do you think? If you double the radius, do you think the area will double? A volume. Sur uh, sur uh, surface area, sorry. No? Do you think it'll more than double or less than double if you double the radius? So if you double the radius, you think the surface area will more than double? Okay. Yeah? So you think if you double the radius, the surface area will exactly double? I'm going to ask you the same question with volume, too. If you double the radius, does the volume double? All right, well, let's try it. Let's, um, let's find our surface area here. Okay, to do um, the comparison, leave the answer in terms of pi. 
Okay, so you don't you don't get a messy number. Okay, in this case, my radius is two. Uh, James, what's two squared? Four. And then four times four? Sixteen. Sixteen pi. Okay, that's my surface area. Okay, make sure you put square inches because it's a surface area. question on that. Right, now let's try it um, with a bigger sphere. Let's double the radius. Let's see what happens to the surface area now. This time in place of r I filled in 4 instead of 2. Okay. Uh, Owen, what's 4 squared? 4 squared would be 16, Mr. Hager. Thank you. 16. Um, Eric, what's 16 times 4? Good, 64. How do those two numbers I have circled compare? This is, the bottom one is when you doubled the radius that we started with, went from 2 to 4. Yep? The bottom one is 4 times the top. 4 times, yep. So in a, in a sphere, if you double the radius, the surface area quadruples. Okay? And the reason it quadruples is because of this part of the formula. It's r squared. So think about what happens if you took a number like 3 and square it versus a number like 6 and square it. Well, if you square 3, you get 9. If you square 6, you get 36. 36 is 4 times bigger than 9. So it's always 4 times as big. Okay, give me a question on that. What do you think would happen if you tripled the radius? Are we tripling it from 2 or 4? doesn't matter if you just took any, say your radius was x, and then you made it triple x, 3x. What do you think? What do you think the difference in the surface area would be? It doesn't matter if you go from 1 to 3, 3 times the amount? Yeah. Well, when we doubled, though, it wasn't double the amount, it quadrupled. Uh, well, I mean, like, Yep. be eight times as big. If you triple the radius, it gets eight times as big. Think of it as r cubed, two, okay. or I'm sorry, three, um, thinking of volume, nine times as big. Okay. If, you, if your radius is squared and you tripled it, it would be nine times as big. Take, take two numbers. Take two and square it. And then take triple that. Take 6 and square it. Okay. Does everyone agree that 6 is triple the size of 2? Anyone disagree with that? Yeah, I agree. I okay. disagree. You don't think 2 times 3 is, is going to be 6? I thought you were 2 times 2 times 2. That's not tripling, though. Like, if you have something 2 and you make it 3 times as long, it's 6. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so this is 2. This is 3 times as big. You've got to square your radius in the formula. 2 squared is 4. 6 squared is 36. 4 times 9 is 36. So if you triple your radius, it gets 9 times as big. Also, a sphere, I don't know if anyone knew this, but a sphere is the best-shaped container you can make that would hold the mo most amount of stuff, and it would use the least amount of material to make it. No other shape is, is more efficient um, than a sphere for holding material. That's why sometimes when you see um, things in nature, a lot of times you see spheres, like when you blow a bubble. Uh, they don't come out as cubes. Okay? Cubes aren't really an efficient shape, but a sphere will hold the most amount of stuff, least amount of surface area. Unfortunately for transporting stuff, spheres aren't really that easy to transport. Is that why in bubble baths it takes circles? That's why your bubbles are circles. Yeah. Would you say Denver like a planet? Something. Yeah. Some their spherical shape. Yeah. Okay. What do you think is going to happen if you take um, a sphere and you cut the sphere with a plane? And then you look at the shape you have. What could happen? Yeah. Okay, what would the shape of the cross-section be? A circle. A circle. Okay, assuming that 
your plane just doesn't touch the edge of the sphere and it's tangent. If it does that, the cross section would be a point. Okay, imagine, you know, just touching the edge. Very, very small, it would just be a point. Okay, so your cross section is either a single point or it's a circle. How would you make the biggest circle you can as a cross section? By cutting a sphere. How, how would you have to cut the sphere? On the diameter, right? Like a diameter right through the center. Okay? Just like a diameter goes right through the center. So if your plane slices through the center, the cross section is called a great circle. Okay? It's the biggest circle that, that you can have. Anywhere else, if you slice the sphere, the circle is going to be smaller. Or it'll just be a single point. Okay. If you slice a sphere right through the center, okay, it's going to separate your sphere into two halves. What do we call those two halves? Okay, they, they would be congruent. But there's a special name when you take a sphere and you have half of it. Okay, so they, they are going to be symmetrical. It's a name. We use it. You've heard it. You may not have used it Congruent. like in this sense before, but we use it when we talk about the planet. Hemisphere. Hemisphere. Okay. So if you take a sphere, slice it right through the center, you get two hemispheres. Okay. So in this shape, they're showing you slicing through the sphere. This is not a great circle on top. That's smaller. If you were to slice the sphere right through the middle, they're showing the great circle down below. I just want you to understand when you slice the sphere, your cross section is a circle. Question on that? Yes. I saw that. Yeah. It's like chrome looking. Yeah. It's pretty neat. All right, so this one um, requires you to think, think a little bit. Okay? They're telling me that the circumference of a great circle that's part of a sphere is 13.8 pi feet. I want the surface area of the sphere. Okay, so first thing I would do is write this down. That's your surface area of the sphere. What variable do you need to solve for? The radius. The radius. Somehow you've got to use what they're giving you to find the radius. I have a question for you. It's actually about the hemisphere and stuff. Is it only a hemisphere if you cut it that sphere like exactly in half? So you cut it in like three quarters, right? So like the top half would that be a hemisphere? Um, well, let's see. According to um, uh, let's look at our book and see what it says. It says every great circle of a sphere separates into two congruent halves called hemispheres. So our book says congruent halves. So if you slice it anywhere else, according to our book, it's not. Um, but that's a good question to look up in general. Do the hemispheres have to be perfectly the same size? Mr. Hager, what if you have like a, a circle, but it's like, it's got like a disc. It's like a disc? Yeah, I guess. There you go. But like, mm -hmm. is that, could you get a disc anywhere in the, in the circle? Like if you cut it anywhere? Or is it just? If you, like if you cut it into like, Two parts? Yeah, it would almost be like a disc. It wouldn't, um, or like a hockey puck. It wouldn't be, the sides wouldn't be perfectly straight. They'd be curved a little bit, more like that. Those edges, they'd be a little rounded. But yep, discs. In fact, in calculus, um, a lot of times when they find the volume of something, there's different methods to do it, and one method is called the disc method. Basically, you take you know, you take a 3D object like a sphere and you slice it into small disks. And basically, you find the volume of each, each disk and then you stack them all together. Wouldn't that be kind of hard though because the disks on the edge are curved? Uh, oh, my question mark. The thing is, the smaller you make the disks, the less you notice the curve. Okay. Um, here's another example. In calculus, they might have you find the area under that curve. Well, there's no, um, there's no nice shape. You can't use like a simple, simple formula. 
but you can approximate it with rectangles. Now, imagine I used rectangles, you know, like this. All right, let's say I use big rectangles. Now I'm in another one here. And I could find the area of those three rectangles, but look at all this space that I, I left out, right? Because of all the curves. So the solution is basically to make your rectangles smaller. And the smaller you make your rectangles, watch what happens to the amount of space you leave out. See, there's small spaces, but they're very, very small now. You see what I mean? And in calculus, basically what we do is we let the size of these rectangles basically get so small you can't even see them, and we get a perfect approximation of that area. So it's not even an approximation because the rectangles get infinitely small. It's kind of hard to think about, but that's the idea. And it's almost becoming like a line segment. It's so small. Okay? You don't even notice the curves anymore. Yeah, that's kind of a quick, very quick basic idea. All right, so how can we use this to figure out the radius of our sphere? What, what other formula would be helpful to use here? Area of a circle. Not the area of a circle, but the, yeah, the circumference of a circle. Okay, circumference of a circle is pi times diameter. Well, we know the circumference of the great circle. It's 13.8 uh, times pi. Don't even do pi out, just leave it, because watch what's going to happen. How do you move pi to the other side here? Yeah. yeah. Just divide both sides by pi and look what happens. You get the diameter of the great circle, which is also the diameter of the sphere. So the diameter is 13.8 feet. Now, can I just plug 13.8 into my formula? What do I have to be careful of? Right. Uh, she was say, sorry. Yeah, this is the diameter. Okay. So if this is the formula you used, you just found the diameter, you're going to take half of it. That's your radius. Okay. So the radius is 6.9 feet. Now we're good. Just do out your problem. Any questions on how we got the diameter or why I divided it by 2? Okay, do it up and see what we get. You know what? Don't even round it. Just leave that exact. Just hit times pi times four. Okay, so your surface area, I mean this is a this is a pretty big sphere. Okay, you're talking a sphere that's almost 14 feet across. I mean that's it's pretty pretty big. So the surface area is about 598.28. Make sure you put the right in it. So what's my exponent? Because it's the surface area. It would be pi. Or do you yeah, I multiplied by pi. But what's my label here? Squared. You could leave it in terms of pi if they ask that. Okay. Sometimes we leave it in terms of pi. Sometimes we multiply pi out. Okay. On a test, you can do it either way unless the directions say to do it a certain way. This time I just multiply out. Okay, any questions on that? Okay, last one with surface area, then we'll move on to volume. Okay, it says a baseball has a radius of 1.45 inches. Estimate the amount of leather you're gonna need to cover the ball. What kind of problem is that? If you're covering an object, is that a volume problem or surface area? Surface area. Yeah. You're not, you're not filling the object. You're just covering the surface of it with a material. Uh, Alyssa, what's my formula for volume of the sphere? 4 pi r squared. Four pi r squared. In this case, they tell us the radius. You don't even need to divide by 2. It's 1.45. Oh, surface area, thank you. 
we're going to we'll do volume next. Okay, so just do that out and see what you get. 1.45 squared, don't even round it, just leave that. Hit times 4, and then just hit times 5. Okay, so you need about 26.42 square inches of material. What's covering the outside? Oh, what kind? I don't know. Yeah, what kind? Yeah. And keep in mind, this might not be exact because sometimes when you cover something, there might be a little bit of overlap, you know, where they stitch it. I don't know exactly how they do that on the seam. Uh, but this is a good approximation of how much leather you need. Okay. And keep in mind the, um, the shape. Okay, when you, if you were to take the piece of leather um, off the uh, baseball, it, it doesn't really look, um, it's almost like a rectangular shape, but it's curved. And it gets a little like skinnier in the middle. That was off, that wasn't good. It's kind of hard to sketch. But that's basically if you take two pieces and put them together. Let's see if I can draw the other one. Um, kind of, kind of like that. If you were to unwrap a baseball, that's that's kind of what it would look like. All right. Yeah. So how they how they cut the material might not be exactly like this number, but it's close. No. Have you? Oh uh, yeah, it's happened to me once actually. All right, so now we're going to look at the um, how you find the volume of a sphere. Okay. And to find the volume, we're going to kind of look at it like that idea that I was explaining to Denver earlier with with calculus. All right, we're going to imagine. Okay, imagine you were finding the volume of a sphere by using a bunch of pyramids. Okay. So all the pyramids would come from the center. And here's a picture of one of the pyramids right here. Okay. And that, that picture is showing four pyramids. Okay. And you'd stack in all the pyramids you need to find the volume. Well, if you let the pyramids get smaller and smaller and smaller, eventually, even though the surface of a pyramid is flat, if these little squares got smaller and smaller and smaller, it'd kind of be like the idea of a soccer ball. Even though the sides are flat, if you put enough of them, it starts to approximate a round object. All right, so imagine the interior of a sphere. Okay, this time the radius is r. And that's also the height of every pyramid. Okay, pyramid starts at the center, goes right to the surface. So the height of every pyramid is r. Uh, that's how many pyramids we're going to need to fill the sphere. Okay, we'll just say we need n of them. But n represents a number. Okay, we don't know however many pyramids we need. Okay, each pyramid is going to have an area base of B. Okay, we don't know what the area of the base is. Just we'll call it capital B. And the height of the pyramid is R. Okay, so when we find the volume of a pyramid, what's the fraction we need in front? Because it's a pyramid. The same thing for a cone. Yeah? One third. Yeah, it's one third. Area of the base times the height. What's the height of the, um, the pyramid? Yeah, it's the radius of the sphere. Okay. So the volume of each pyramid is one-third the area of the base times the height, one-third BR. Okay. Any question on that? Now, how many of these pyramids do we have? Uh, we gave a name to how many we have. N. Yeah, we have N of them. And could be maybe 1,000, 10,000, couple million, whatever it is. Okay, it doesn't matter. You'll see why it doesn't matter in a second. All right. What's the surface area of a sphere? I just want to remember what that is. Katrina? Um, one Uh, so this stuff has to do with, this is volume. The one third is with volume. So surface area is what we just did like on the baseball problem and the, um, the other problem before that. Oh, so four pi r squared? Good, 
Okay, surface area is 4 pi r squared. Okay, so I know that if I find the area of all these little squares, this one, this one, this one, that one, every single one of them, that's what the surface area should add up to. Okay, because that's all those little squares make up the entire surface, if I put enough pyramids in. Gendra, how many pyramids do we have? N. N? And how do we represent the area of each one of these squares? What letter? B. Yeah, capital B. These two things should be exactly the same. If you add up the sum of all the areas of those bases, you could do it two ways. You could either say, well, I know the area of each base is B, and I have N of them, so I have N times B. That's the area. For example, let's say the base uh, area was 5, and you had 1,000 little squares. 1,000 times 5, that would be 5,000. Okay, that's the area of all, all the squares. Or you could use the formula we just have, 4 pi r squared. Either way, these two things should come out exactly the same as n gets large enough. Okay? If your squares are really, really big, it's not going to be accurate. Okay? It's kind of like the curve I showed you with the big rectangles. You're going to have a lot of gaps. As the squares get very, very, very small, the surface is going to look just like a sphere. Right? So these two things come out the same when the number of pyramids starts to get really, really big. Okay? Like millions of pyramids. Let's, let's write this down. So this and that come out the same. All right, so now I've written down our formula for the volume. Okay, we're going to come back to this in one second. Okay, here's the volume of one pyramid. But we don't just have one pyramid. We have n of them. Okay, so take the volume of one pyramid and multiply by how many pyramids you have. Okay, in our case, we have n. Okay, I'm going to rewrite that, and I want you to see if you can Tell me what I should do next. Okay. All I did was regroup some letters together. Put the one third in front. That's all I did. And I put N, B, R next to each other. Because we usually like to put numbers all the way in front. Not in the middle. Did anybody see what I can do with what's in parentheses? Somehow I want to get rid of this, this N and this B. Is there any way I can get rid of it? Something I can replace it with? Did we say earlier that NB was equal to anything? Remember we said there were two ways you could find the surface area of the sphere. You could either take the number of little squares you have times the area of each square, or we could use the surface area formula we already know. But both of these should come out the same. So what could I change n times b to? Yeah. n times b is 4 pi r squared. Any question on that? Okay, who can simplify that for me? Give me my, my final answer. We have 1 third times 4 pi r squared times r. If you see the same letter in two spots, you're not simplified. If you see a number in two spots, you're not simplified. That can all be combined. So how could we combine 1 third times 4? Four? 4 divided by 3. Four thirds. Okay, I don't see a pi anywhere else, so that's just going to stay where it is. How about r squared and r? R to the third. Yeah. There's your formula for the volume of the sphere. Four thirds pi r cubed. Okay, v is the volume. R is your radius. Okay, what's kind of nice about this formula, you can remember its volume because it's got an exponent of 3. Surface area has an exponent of 2. Right, so you can kind of keep them straight. Mm. 
So that idea of approximating things by letting a shape get like smaller and smaller and smaller, whether it's rectangles under a curve or pyramids in a, in a sphere, um, it usually takes people a while to try to understand that. Okay. But if you can understand that, that's kind of the idea of um, parts of calculus. All right, so let's, uh, I think this will probably be our last one, and then we'll, we'll do the other test. Okay, so for this problem, they're going to make a steel bearing by taking a cylindrical slug, heat it, melting it down, and pressing it into a sphere. Now, as they melt it down, they're saying same volume. So you're going to melt this cylinder steel down. You're not going to lose anything when you melt it. You're just going to melt it, compress it into a sphere. I want to find the radius of the ball bearing that they're going to form. Okay, what's um, what's my first step? What should I do first? Uh, find the volume of what? Cylinder. Yeah. Let's find out how much material we have to start with, because that's going to be the amount of material we have when we're done. It's going to be in a different shape, but it's still going to be the same amount of stuff. Okay, um, how about Marquise? What's the formula for um, volume of a cylinder? And remember, for volume, there's only two formulas you need to know. One of them has a one-third in front. The other one is the same thing without the one-third. So by putting that one-third in, you're telling me it comes to a point, like a cone or a pyramid. Does that, does that shape come to a point? No. So we can leave off the one-third. Volume is area of the base times the height. Now, you started to tell me, Marquise, the area of the base. What's the area of the base here? What formula do we use for that? Yeah, good. Shape of the base is a circle. There's your volume of a sphere, uh, cylinder. Okay, let's um, fill in everything we know. Okay, we got pi. My radius is one. Okay, Kiara, what's my height? Two. two. One squared is one. One times two is two. That's the volume of the cylinder. Two pi cubic centimeters. Okay, good. So now I know how much material I'm starting with. Still doesn't answer the question. Okay, what would I... Um, what would I do next? James? Um, so we know how much material we're going to melt down, and we're going to form it into the shape of a sphere. That's what a ball bearing is. It's a sphere. This part right here where it says um, spherical. I wrote spherical right here. Because you can't have, um, if we're talking about a radius, radius only applies to things that are circular or spherical. Okay, what's the volume formula for a sphere? Um, uh, four, right, uh, four over three pi r to the third, right? Yep. And there's only two letters in this formula. One of them we already know. Which one do we know? The radius. Uh, that's what we're finding. Oh, oh okay. Um, we know that four is one more than three. So, oh, we know, we know with pi. Well, the volume, 
right? We know the volume of how much material we have because we started with that cylinder. We're going to melt it down into a sphere. Okay, and you'll see why I left the pie in there. Something's going to happen in one second. Okay, there's your volume. Okay, Four thirds pi r cubed. What can I cancel from each side? Yeah, you can divide each side by pi. That's gone. So it would have been a waste of time to multiply it out because it's just going to cancel. Um, next thing I want to do, let's get the 4 thirds on the left side. Okay, how do you move the 4 and the 3 at the same time? What, what can you do? Yeah? Reciprocal. And what do you do with the reciprocal? Good, multiply by 3 fourths. Okay, when you multiply each side by 3 fourths, 3's are gone, 4's are gone. Okay, only thing on the right hand side is r cubed. On the left we've got 6 divided by 4, which is the same as 3 divided by 2. Or you could just say 1 and a half. Okay, what's my last step to get, um, to get r by itself? Cube root. Okay, and this is one that some people might not know how to um, type in the cube root. Okay, generally you type in the root you're looking for, and then you should have a button on your calculator that has an X and a little root button. Okay, whatever number you typed in before, that's the root that it's going to find. Okay, if you want square root, they got a special button for it. But if you want cube root, fourth root, fifth root, you just type in <coughs> the number of the root, press that special root button, and now type in what goes under it. One and a half. So the radius of the sphere is about 1.14. Yeah? Fourth root, fifth root, yep. Just like fourth power, fifth power. We got special names for second power, you can say squared or a third power cubed, but there's no special names after those two. Good. Any question on that? Okay, so I made that mistake here. I said you're pressing a cylindrical shape into a cylindrical shape. I meant to make spherical shape. Ball bearing is a little sphere. Has anyone ever seen those before? Ball bearing? Yeah, they're like little, little tiny spheres. They're usually like chrome. Sometimes they put them in any um, parts that they want to move nicely. Um, like in your car, you might have wheel bearings, like in the front. Keeps, the, keeps them rotating, tires rotating smoothly, the axle rotating. And it has minimal friction. That's why they use it. Okay. A lot of chairs, if chairs swivel, sometimes they have ball bearings in the, in the swivel so that there's no friction. It swivels very nicely. All right. Okay, so that's basically um, everything you guys need to know about spheres. All right, so the homework is 762. Okay. I'd like you to try 11 to 16 all. 20, 21, 27, 28. 30, 31, 35, and 41 to 43. Okay, this homework is due on Thursday. Okay, I won't see you guys tomorrow, so it's due June 4th.